So in order to use PowerShell and the Azure CLI, you have to have PowerShell and the Azure CLI. And immediately you're thinking to yourself, Knox, wait right there. I have PowerShell already. I'm going to put PWSH here. Sometimes I've also seen it abbreviated as POSH for short. Because I, you're thinking to yourself, have a Windows computer, which does come with Windows PowerShell. It, it does. But here's the real kicker. Windows PowerShell is actually going away. For a long time now, Microsoft has actually been transitioning all of their programming languages and frameworks to be open source so that they run everywhere. So for the longest time, we had the .NET framework, and that was specifically used for building Windows computers or Windows software. Then when they announced this transition, they began working on something called .NET Core which took the core functionalities out of the .NET framework, but made them open source. I'm going to write OSS as open source software. Then eventually they got away, but because they were, my, they were actually developing both of these side by side, really what they were doing was maintaining the .NET framework while improving .NET Core. Eventually they got down to where we are today, which is just plain old .NET, and it's open source software everywhere. Now, .NET is a framework. It's a way of developing. And from that .NET framework comes the programming languages that make up Microsoft stuff, like C Sharp, F Sharp, and here we go, PowerShell. So the Windows PowerShell that you may have installed in your computer that came with, you know, Windows 7 and Windows 10, and I guess Windows 8 by default, and the subsequent server versions of it, Server 2012, 2012 R2, and 2016, that all refers to the old school .NET framework, which is really no longer a thing. We are now focused in on using .NET. And the PowerShell version that we use currently is PowerShell version 7, which is built upon .NET and does not ship with Windows computers by default. So you have to install it, no matter what operating system you're working on. Now, the other reason that we really care about this is because to use the Azure commands, they're specifically called command lits, and we'll talk more about that in a bit, you must have PowerShell version 7. The Azure command lits in their current state only work on PowerShell version 7. So where do we go to get started on this? Well, first of all, we're going to install PowerShell 7. Just Google it right there. Now you see installing PowerShell on Windows, but what I really want you to do is go to how to install PowerShell 7. That's really where we want to live. Now here, there's a lot of things that are tempting to click on installing PowerShell on Windows, how to install PowerShell 7. Uh, that's not what you want. It's actually a little old there. It's a couple of years, about three years old at this point. You, what you really want to do is scroll on down to where you see a Microsoft Learn link that says install PowerShell on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Give that a click, and then you can actually pick the operating system that you want to work with. So from here, you got a bunch of different options. You can see the install PowerShell on Windows, install on Mac OS, install on Linux. And then over here on the left-hand side, this is where you can also see the walkthrough options that you have. This does run on Mac OS with Apple Silicon, as well as ARM architectures, or you can run it inside of a container. Don't worry if containers feel a little fuzzy right now. We're, of course, going to talk about them when the time comes. So if you're working on Windows, jump on over here uh, to use the, the follow the steps to install it on your particular platform. The recommended way to install it is using WinGit, which you can see is pretty straightforward. You can search for Microsoft.PowerShell and then use the installation options right here. You can either install the current version of PowerShell, which you'll see something like version 7.3.6, or you can get the preview version, uh, which you know may have some new functionality, but might also not work. Now you also have an MSI installer for the latest version, depending on if you wanna work on a 64 or 32 bit architecture. And then of course, for my particular use case, I'm working on Mac OS. So I can scroll on down here and I can see that I can actually use Brew to bring PowerShell to light. It even shows the commands to upgrade PowerShell, which makes that pretty easy too. Now, once I've got that installed in my environment, I can actually jump to my launch pad and search for PowerShell. And notice this, PowerShell typically comes up in a separate uh, terminal than the default terminal right here. 
but I know I'm on PowerShell if I kind of like zoom way in right there because I see on my prompt a PS like this. You'll get a similar thing if you're working on a Windows computer and also you'll find out it may have a slightly different format for the terminal that you're working with. It might have a dark blue background uh, and maybe yellow font. You'll also see there are things like syntax highlighting whenever I'm working with PowerShell. Like I can type in a variable like account name right here and see it highlights green. Then I can type in some string and it kind of highlights, you know, this bluish tealish color. So PowerShell does give you the ability directly in the shell to interpret what's going on here. Now, I also want to point out for particularly big scripts, if you're working with PowerShell, you want to have VS Code or Visual Studio Code installed. You just want to. So go back to your web browser, search for VS Code Download, and get that installed right now. Go to code.visualstudio.com and install it on whatever platform you're working on yet again. You'll launch VS Code real quick. I'm just, you know, walking you through the basic setups here. I'll launch VS Code. Oh, it launched on a different screen. Hang on one sec. Here we go. I'll bring it into the screen over here like this, and I'll go full screen. And what I want you to see is probably on your screen, you'll see this on the left-hand side on over here on your screen. I have mine on my right-hand side. This is where you actually add extensions into VS Code so it can do cooler things. So if you jump here to the extensions, you're going to want to search for PowerShell so that it has the ability to work with PowerShell uh, scripts that you want to work with. So in my case, I've already got it installed. That's why I see a little gear right here. But in your case, you'll see the ability to click the install button. Now, why is this so cool? Well, because I can do all of my PowerShell work for big stuff, big scripts right here in VS Code. Check this out. If I want, I can, you know, create a new folder right here. We'll call this posh demo like this and inside posh demo i'll create a new file called my script dot ps1 powershell scripts are a ps1 extension and you can see the little logo actually changes to this little shell icon that's like the powershell shell icon so when i press enter here and bring it up on the screen my powershell script where i can start typing in things one of the cool things that it did is it automatically launched a powershell terminal directly in my editor. So I can run my PowerShell script right here in my editor instead of having to jump between programs to debug and test it out. Let's do something really basic just to test this out. I'll do something like write output like so, and then we'll just put hello world right here. So what this is gonna do when I run this script is it's gonna print hello world out to the terminal. So when I'm ready to run this, I'll move into my posh demo folder like this with CD posh demo. And then I can simply run my script by calling my script.ps1. When I press enter here, you see it printed hello world out to the terminal. I know that was pretty basic, but we're gonna talk more about what that did later. For now, I just want you to have the environment stood up. Now, what about the Azure CLI? Well, this is a CLI, aha, very clever, uh, specifically for Azure. I mean, it lives up to what its name says. And again, there are a lot of features that are specific to the Azure CLI that aren't necessarily out in the portal yet. So you're going to want to search for install AZ CLI right here. Now, this first link right here, how to install the Azure CLI, is a great link to go to. And again, because this is all built on .NET, which is now open source, you can run this on Windows, Mac OS, or your favorite variant of Linux. You can, of course, run this in a container as well. Now, just to make sure that this is installed correctly in your environment, you'll choose, of course, your operating system, and then follow these steps to install it. Again, Mac OS makes it really easy with just using Brew. When that's set up, I can come back to really any terminal that I want to use because it's accessible in the global path. I can say AZ version right here, and it prints out a little JSON object telling me about the individual pieces of the Azure CLI that are available and what versions they're currently on. So you may notice that I actually ran this in my PowerShell terminal and not my regular terminal. This would still work just fine in a standard terminal. Let me just open up a new window right here and show you if I do AZ version right there on the screen, see, it still prints out just fine. 
So now that we have the prereqs installed, it's time to actually start, you know, using it. So we're going to introduce some of the basic things of working with PowerShell in the upcoming videos. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.